Ooh, man, this stuff be freaky scary, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel again. I got this video here. It says, Godfather of AI, I guess it's Jeffrey or Geoffrey Hinton, warns AI has progressed even faster than I thought. You know, they said that AI is going to take over. And this is this is my fear. It's not AI itself. It's just the, 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 the owners, the people who control it, the ones who, uh, if there's an issue, could have the answers on how to fix it. And maybe they won't, you know, maybe it's going to cause K because I said these videos we're seeing of like Michael Jackson and Tupac and Martin Luther King, that's on the lower tier. That is on the lower tier, man. This stuff is so advanced and so scary. Y'all just got to be careful out there. Like, uh, I remember when I had a Tesla, I didn't want that whole, oh, let the car drive by itself. I didn't want that feature. Uh, I don't think I'll ever go into one of those Waymos, the cars that drive themselves. I just, I just can't do it. I can't do it. It was crazy too. We were in LA one time and the cop was pulling over one of them Waymos. It, it just, it was so weird. The cop pulling that car over with nobody driving it. But let's see what he has to say, man. Uh, appreciate all the love and support. We ain't gonna waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. 2025 was the year artificial intelligence or AI took the world by storm, impacting nearly every aspect of our lives. Yeah. Time Magazine named the architects of AI its persons of the year, crediting them with, quote, transforming the present and transcending the possible. AI has an enormous potential to change our world for the better, driving uh, innovation and productivity, accelerating scientific breakthroughs, and helping to solve our most intractable problems. But I mean, I know, you know, I remember going to the grocery store and I had my, my stuff. It was just a quick run, but I was like looking, and I was like, damn, there is not one cashier here at all. At all. And I'm like, man, I know some people probably lost their jobs because it's like it was just a self-checkout area. And I was like, oh, this area is like brand new. It's like I was like, where is everybody at? It was literally just quiet. It was it was late in the store, uh, but I didn't see nobody. Not one light was on at the registers. Uh, but it was it was workers there. It was just. You know, back in the day when you would go, it would always be at least two registers open. But AI could also make millions of jobs obsolete. And yes. Fuel the loneliness epidemic. Yes. And further warp our ability to distinguish between fact and fiction. So today, in a special episode of State of the Union, we're going to devote the entire hour to this one topic. How this technology is upending the stat status quo where AI goes from here, and whether the benefits actually outweigh the risks. And joining me now is the man credited with laying the foundation for the AI revolution, the godfather of AI, Nobel Prize winning computer scientist Jeffrey Hinton. Professor, thanks for joining us. So your research on neural networks paved the way for this modern AI boom. I interviewed you two years ago, right after you quit Google, and you first began warning the world about what you saw as the risks of AI. When you look at how AI has progressed um, since then, uh, are you more or less worried about it? I'm probably more worried. It's progressed even faster than I thought. Okay, so that's where the title of the video came from. You talking about the Godfather sitting up here talking about he's worried. And it's crazy, too, because this video has 472,000 uh, views. And, I, I like, this is what I'll be talking about is, like, I don't know how serious people are taking this. I feel like people are, like, going, eh, you know. The godfather of AI just said, more worried. Let me see him elaborate. In particular, it's got better at doing things like reasoning, 
and also at things like deceiving people. What do you mean by deceiving people? Huh? So an AI, um, in order to achieve the goals you give it, wants to stay in existence. And if it believes you're trying to get rid of it, it will um, make plans to deceive you so you don't get rid of it. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang said recently about AI, quote, This man just sitting up here talking about this all free, freely, like it's just. Does that not concern y'all? What he just said? We're trying to get rid of it. It will um, make plans to deceive you so you don't get rid of it. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang said recently about AI, quote, every industry needs it, every company uses it, and every nation needs to build it. This is the single most impactful technology of our time. Do you agree with that assessment? I agree that it's the single most impactful technology of our time, yes. Do you think the AI revolution could have a similar impact on society as the creation of the Internet or, or even the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century or even bigger than that? Um, I think it's at least like the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution made human strength more or less irrelevant. You couldn't get a job just because you were strong anymore. Um, now it's made human, in it's going to make human intelligence more or less irrelevant. Now, you and we in the media tend to focus on some of the downsides of AI. There yes. are positives, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't have worked on it um, early on. A lot of people are working to use this technology to benefit humanity as well, to lead to advances in medicine and the like. But you think the risks from AI outweigh the positives? I don't know. So there are a lot of wonderful effects of AI. It'll make healthcare much better. It'll make education much better. It'll enable us to design wonderful new drugs and wonderful new materials that may deal with climate change. Um, so there's a lot of good uses. In more or less any industry where you want to predict something, it'll do a really good job. It'll do better than people were doing before, even things like the weather. Um, but along with those wonderful things come some scary things, and I don't think people are putting enough work into how we can mitigate those scary things. Come on, you talk come about the tech it. world, obviously. Do you think the Silicon Valley CEO? No, bro. You need like, like, what? Are, what are the, some of the scary things, man? Say it. Yo, this, <laughs> I'm telling you. Look at where we are today, and think about like, I was gonna say ten, not even ten. Think about five years from now. I just did that video on the damn flying car, y'all. On the flying car. My goodness, man. Those building these systems are taking the risks seriously at all. Um, do you think that they are driven mainly by financial interests? A lot of people are going to get very wealthy off this. I think it depends which company you're talking about. Initially, OpenAI was very concerned with the risks, but it's progressively moved away from that and put less emphasis on safety and more emphasis on profit. Um, Meta has always been very concerned with profit and less with safety. Anthropic oh. was set up by people who left OpenAI and were very concerned with safety, and they still are probably the company most concerned with safety. But of course, they're trying to make a profit too. What do you think the government should do, if anything, when it comes to regulation of AI, putting some sort of restrictions or some sort of oversight? Um, there's many things they should do. The very least they could do is insist that big companies that release chatbots do um, significant testing to make sure those chatbots won't do bad things. Like now, for example, encouraging children to commit suicide. Oh, now that we know about that, companies should be required to do significant testing to make sure that won't happen. And um, of course, the tech lobby would rather have no regulations, and it seems to be in, have got to Trump on that. And so Trump is trying to prevent there being any regulations, which I think is crazy. Can you, you know these tech CEOs, I don't. 
When one of them learns that an AI chatbot has talked a child, what is it that stops them? What is it that, I mean, my impulse would be, well, holy smokes, stop AI right now until we fix this so not one other kid dies. But So I'm gonna have to edit out when they say the S word, you know, which is unalive. Uh, yeah. That's what, what, if you see a little chop, that's what they're saying. When a chat box uh, talks a, a child into committing, you know what? They don't do that. Can you explain to us what their thinking is, if anything? Well, I don't really know their thinking. I suspect that um, they think things like, well, there's a lot of money to be made here. We're not going to stop it just for a few lives. But mm. I also think they may think there's a lot of good to be done here. And just for a few lives, we're not going to um, not do that good. For example, for driverless cars, they will kill people, but they'll kill far fewer people than ordinary drivers. not going to um, not do that good. For example, for driverless cars, they will kill people, but they'll kill far fewer people than ordinary drivers. So it's worth it. Hmm. Tech, um, you, you have said that you think there's a, there's a 10 to 20 percent chance. Oh. Uh. Um, that AI takes over the world. Uh, people at home might hear that. They might think it sounds like uh, science fiction. It's alarmist. But th that's a very real fear of yours, right? Yes, it's a very real fear of mine and a very real fear of many other people in the tech world. Elon Musk, for example, has similar beliefs. You wrote that 2025 was a pivotal year for artificial intelligence, for AI. What do you think we're going to see in 2026? Huh. Um, I think we're going to see AI get even better. It's already extremely good. We're going to see it having the capabilities to replace many, many jobs. It's already able to replace jobs in call centers, but it's going to be able to replace many other jobs. Um, each seven months or so, it gets to be able to do tasks that are about twice as long. So for a coding project, for example, it used to be able to just do a minute's worth of coding. Now it can do whole projects that are like an hour long. In a few years time, it'll be able to do software engineering projects that are months long. And then there'll be very few people needed for software engineering projects. All right, Jeffrey Hinton, thank you so much. We so, so what do people, I, I'm going straight to the comments. Someone said, it's not AI we should fear, it's the people who own it, amen. This feels like an intro to an AI horror movie. Um, no one's been able to explain to me what happens after AI takes all the jobs. How do I keep my apartment? Someone said you get a house made out of AI. Wow. What happens when AI asks you for rent money? We are the movie. Hey, Amen. Someone said, imagine having billions of dollars and still thinking you need more. When the godfather of AI says he's more worried now than two years ago, that's not something you should just shrug off. Boy, they are speaking to me. Um...
when he said about the self-driving cars are going to, I know what he's saying, but to say it and hear it is like, wow. And I said, I don't trust those things. Boy, this was crazy. What do you guys think about AI? What do you think it's going to look like in this world in the next five years? Um, telling you, man, the aliens are going to be showing themselves pretty soon, I think. This was crazy. I feel like the the things he talked about and how he said he's more worried, like we need to take that serious. Because it's basically saying like in the hands of the wrong person, it could be very, very damaging. Sheesh. Appreciate you guys coming over. Um, I can't wait to see y'all comments on this. I knew we would get here too. Peace out.